<sighs> if this chair randomly collapses on me, it's because we only got two in this accommodation and this one's broken. If I disappear below the table, that's why. So just keep rolling. So what is life actually like on the tiny little island of Guernsey? Well, that's what we decided we would have a quick discussion about coming from the big country of the United Kingdom and moving to the small island of Guernsey and basically what you can expect if you're going to be thinking about making the move yourself. Now we moved here about nine months ago now and there's been some big eye-openers about what we think of the island and what we were expecting life to actually be like here compared to what it turned out to be. What we're going to talk about isn't actually based around what life is like currently. We've done an entirely different video on what life is like through the pandemic and with the restrictions and all that. If you want to watch that video, click tab. It's going to be on one of the top two corners now. But let's get stuck into what life is generally like in Guernsey. It's in the west, bam, over the sea. Oh wow, look at that guys. Woo. This is proper one of the best places to come for sunset, I think. So starting off this video, we're going to be talking about the landscape of Guernsey, which is actually really impressive for such a small island. We just did a little bit of research actually, and we found out that you can actually fit three islands of Guernsey into the city of Glasgow, which is where we're from, which I'm quite amazed by. Yeah, for, for some perspective that shows you actually how tiny Guernsey is compared to the United Kingdom or whatever else in the world you're going to be from. Yeah, and despite the island being so small, as I said it's really impressive. You've got cliffs on one side of the island and you've got beautiful beaches on the other side of the island. And then in amongst that you've got parks and reservoirs and beautiful scenery in the middle of the island. Yeah, and loads of little towns yeah. as well, so the town of St Peterport, and it's all crammed into 65 square kilometres, uh, that is the coastal size of Guernsey. So what this means for us is that we can spend a day touring around the town, doing a bit of shopping, we can then jump up to the cliffs for some sea views, watching the crashing waves, we can then jump back down onto the beach, watch the sunset. Started walking back to the car and the sky just went, boom, explosion of pink. And we can scoot back around into St Peterport and finish the night off in one of the many bars and restaurants, which is really quite insane. Coming from even the small country of Scotland, where you'd be driving for about three or four hours if you wanted to try and hit all of those destinations in one day. And to be able to do all that with, within probably about a five or six mile drive is quite incredible. Yeah. And it's really, really good fun for when you're actually on a day out like that. Yeah, I think it actually makes the island quite special that we're able to do all of that. That's definitely one of my favourite things about living in Guernsey. Now, although one thing I've got to say though, is despite the tiny size of the island, I think you'll sometimes find yourself driving for hours yeah. across the 65 square kilometres because the roads in Guernsey are really quite insane and there are so, so many cars here. Now, we thought we knew narrow roads up the north coast of Scotland where you would have a single track road with passing places, blah, blah, blah. However, in Guernsey, I think they've decided to try and fit two cars down these tiny little narrow roads, basically until you're hitting each other's wing mirrors and you've got a wall on one side yeah. and bushes on the other side. You don't really get passing places in Guernsey, do you? No, I think it's no. whoever is boldest uh, <laughs> goes first. A lot of people do have either broken wing mirrors or scratches, dents in their cars. It is a common sight around the island. Yeah. <laughs> now a unique thing about Guernsey's roads is not only the tiny little size of them, but they've also got these things called filters, which if you're new to Guernsey, they will definitely throw you off because it, it's based around the community spirit of Guernsey where everyone is trying to give way to each other. So instead of just fighting your way through traffic like we would have done when we were living in London, a filter is basically everyone pulls up and you just wave each other on and you say, no you first, and then you go, no you first. Yeah. No, you first and then you sit there for about 15 minutes until someone actually decides to go and you carry on your merry way. Yeah, the people in Guernsey are just so, so lovely. In fact, actually, back in summer you left your GoPro I did. at the I did, that's right. Yeah, we were down at uh, Castle Coronet shooting a sunrise. I put a GoPro on one of the stands in the barrier <laughs> and completely forgot about it. About four hours later when I went to download the footage. The panic! I realised that we didn't have the camera, so I was like, oh no raced all the way back down to the castle and there it was still sitting on one of the little poles hundreds of people walking up and down past it everyone just looking at it being like oh that's nice someone's left the camera no one even bothered to touch it so there's such a sense of trusting around the community in fact this morning i actually saw 
we were we were doing a bit of shopping and I came out of the shop. It was a small shop, it wasn't like it was a supermarket or anything, but somebody had actually left their baby in a pram <laughs> outside the <laughs> shop. <laughs> poor little baby just sitting. It's like tied to a lab post like a dog. Yeah, yeah, but it was such a small shop, so to be fair, she possibly couldn't yeah, fit the pram fit in, in. But I guess that yeah. just shows you how trusting people are yeah. that they would even leave their baby <laughs> in the shop. Now, another part of the culture here in Guernsey that we are actually fully embracing now is a love of the seaside and always being in and out of the sea. If you see, if you're driving around the island of Guernsey, you will definitely see loads and loads of cars with kayaks and surfboards and everything else on the roof. And there's one specific part which is early morning swims that seem to be all the rage here in Guernsey. And I'm not talking about just during the summer months. There's nutters here that go swimming every single morning from January all the way through to December. Yeah. And we decided to actually try and start that up for ourselves. So back in June, we were bathing in the lovely warm waters, like, oh, this is easy, easy, easy. <laughs> We got ourselves a couple of robes and that's why, so we could dress ourselves and dry ourselves properly after we went in the water. However, we're like, oh, this is so easy. We're going to swim in the water all the way through till Christmas day. And we put it on our Instagram stories and we've put it out there into the world. And now I think we're actually stuck doing it because so many people in the watching us get freezing cold and suffer every single week. So thank you guys. I do look forward, oh well yeah, I look forward to it. <laughs> I look forward to getting out and drying yeah. myself afterwards, so that's that's like the highlight of my week because it means that I don't need to do it again for another seven days. Yeah, it depends on what the tide is doing really. Like we've started to um, recently start going to the bathing pools because it's a lot easier to just jump in than it is yeah. to start wading into the sea. That's like torture yeah. when it's this cold. <laughs> So at least at the bathing pools we can jump in, but there have been a few occasions where it's been really, really choppy and actually we've not been able to fully get into the pools because yeah. the, the pools don't exist, the tide is so high and we've basically just stood and just yeah. got a little bit beaten up, I think, beaten by, up the waves, by the waves, yeah. <laughs> soaked by the waves. And that has been our morning swim, but that's cold water. They say cold water therapy is good for you and I yeah. definitely have I always, well I never thought I'd be this person, but yeah, Fully I can get it. on board with that. Yeah, it that, feels really good, it really sets you up for the day. And I think that is a huge part of the Guernsey culture here, so if you're moving to Guernsey, be prepared to be peer pressured into an early morning swim, and uh, I would say do it, because it is absolutely life changing. I feel like I'm burning yeah. for a bit, because I'm not. And you've got that view, look at that man. What a way to start the day. Feels like I'm in the middle of summer again. <laughs> not sure about that. <laughs> Another really important part of Guernsey culture is eating out at restaurants. Now compared to the UK, it seems that whatever night of the week it is in Guernsey, the restaurants will always be jam-packed. You'll struggle to get a table midweek sometimes so. in some restaurants. And there's a lot of restaurants on the island and they're always so busy. I think we're still trying to actually fight our way around yeah. every single restaurant on the island. And we've been going out, trying to go out at least once a week. And for such a tiny little island, there is an incredible range and variety and number of restaurants that you need to try, which is really exciting if uh, you enjoy that kind of thing. And at this time of year, it's now November. Now, October is actually the start of this festival, but there's a food festival called Tenor Fest. It originally started out as you could go out to a restaurant and get three courses for a tenner. Obviously economical changes have happened over the years yeah. and now the prices have gone up. In some places it will be one course for a tenner, three courses for 20. Um, but that's a really, really good way to get out and explore the restaurants around the island for a much cheaper price. Wow. And the food is so good here uh, as well. It's absolutely delicious. It? Like so, so good. There's Some of my favourite restaurants I've yeah. tried have been right here on the island. So when you come to Guernsey, definitely try and make the most of it and head out as often as you can. And also try and head out to uh, the nightclubs and the bars that you find in St. Peterport and around the island as often as you can as well because I always thought for a place the third of the size of Glasgow, there wouldn't actually be that many nightclubs and it'd be one little bar and that would be it. <laughs> but boy, how wrong was I? Like St. Peterport is buzzing on a Friday and Saturday night and even on a Sunday night we went one time and it was still so much vibrance. And there's a loads and loads of good nightclubs and bars all across the island that you just need to try. I think that could be because people in Guernsey just love to party. There's so many festivals on, on the island throughout the year, whether that's the markets at Seafront Sunday, the balcony gigs on Cobo Beach, 
or even the Sark festival that happens once a year as well. So much going on. I know, I think we actually struggled to find the free weekends, especially during the peak seasons of like between Easter and through all the way through to autumn. There's a festival like every single weekend. So if there's one thing that I've learned about the Gerns is that they absolutely love a party. Mm. And I think that again, that could even just be down to how small an island it is and how close knit a community here it is here in Guernsey because there's times you go down to the shops and you can't even go anywhere without seeing a friendly face or someone that you know or someone that knows someone that you know and every single person on the island just seems to know each other, yeah. which is a lovely thing. Another thing that we get asked quite a lot is what is the cost of living like in Guernsey compared to the UK? What do you think? And I've got to say, I think for our shops, I guess because we shop a vegetarian diet, I've not actually noticed that much of a difference compared to when I was living in London. In terms of just supermarket groceries, you know, it's like kind of similar cost in that sense. I think it's a little bit more. You think? Yeah. Well, we've got to add the ferry cost to them. It's true, yeah, because most things are imported, apart from the milk. Guernsey milk and butter is just a different level. You need you to try the milk. You drink Guernsey milk. I do a little bit. <laughs> in secret. From Woody's kiosk, shout out. Good job, mate. Keep up the good work. Now, in terms of like eating out and nightlife, I've got to say Guernsey is possibly a lot more expensive than your average place in the UK. Yeah, I think it's possibly on par with London places. Yeah. yeah, and I think coming from London, and we also lived in Australia, we were living in Melbourne for about five months last year, it's possibly the same standard of cost as those cities. So it wasn't a big shock to us. Yeah, and it's not something we do often, so when we do do it, we're, you know, Spreading it's not costs. a big deal. Exactly. Um, but yeah, it's not something that we would want to do every weekend just because it is quite expensive. So I think rounding it all up, I love Guernsey. And I have to say, I did live here before a few years ago. And I, when Campbell was living in London, I was flying back and forth off the island every few weeks. And that was like kind of my like relief time, so I never felt claustrophobic. Now we have solidly been on the island now yeah. for nine months. Yeah. I think if I had the choice now, I am definitely getting itchy feet and I would fly off the island just so that I can travel a little bit further. But all in all, we do love it here. I think, yeah, short term, it's, it's safe, it's beautiful, the people are friendly, and there's such a good quality of life that you can actually get from here. Being the travellers that we are, I think long term, it's too small for me. Um, I've got to be brutally honest. It was alright, as Gemma said, when we could fly on and off the island, but now that we're stuck here, it really makes you think about places mm -hmm. that you can settle down. And I think a country where we could travel freely, mm -hmm. such as when we were in Australia, and possibly, hopefully, early next year when we go back to the UK, you know, we can actually just shoot around there yeah. and explore so many more sites. However, if you like the small community vibes, you don't mind being in one place for a long term and you like to get comfortable. You don't mind bumping into somebody you know at every place you go to, yeah. which will end up in a big conversation and yeah. Schedule in an extra yeah. half hour at the shop. <laughs> Guernsey is definitely the place for you and we can highly recommend moving here and settling in because you will love it. So I think that's all we've got to say on that matter, but I want to hear from you. I want to know what you think about Guernsey. Do you live here? Have you been here? Would you come here? Please let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear all about it. If you like this video guys, hit the subscribe button, join our Guernsey community and subscribe for more adventures that we'll be showing you from all around the world. Hit the like button as well if you like the video and we'll be seeing you guys again in the next one.